to who he is worthy to be praised. Thank God, amen, for my wife, Tina, and thank God for the deacons, uh, Deacon Bob Jones and Deacon Ed Van, and um, thank God for the mother and mother Van, amen, and trustees, and each and every one of you, and of course, amen, our evangelists here at the church, amen, evangelist Sylvia Laird, we just thank God, amen, for her and each and every one of you once, a, once again. Man, it's good to see a few people here. We see, amen, brother James Pink here, amen. God bless you, raise your hand, brother, amen. Amen, Verlene's father, we thank God for him. Made it all the way up here from Texas, amen. The great state of Texas, <laughs> amen. He saw all his grandbabies up here singing. <laughs> Proud granddaddy. <laughs> and grandmother and granddaddy here too, amen. Uh, amen, we just thank God, amen, for, uh, for that. Um, here we're going to be coming in the book of uh, Mark, chapter number two. Mark, chapter number two. Mark, chapter number two. Amen. We pass the scripture which we have covered before, and it's quite fitting. And I always look forward to just reading that and studying this passage. And one of my wife's favorite passages also, and just thank God for it. Mark chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. And that's what we look be looking at today. And we'll see how God is going to bless us in this. Let us pray and we'll get into God's word. Dear God, we just come before your mighty presence on this morning, first of all, to say thank you. Thank you, God, for, for just waking us up this morning. Yes, starting us on our way and giving us the activity of our of our limbs thank you God for the shelter of our heads safe transport here to the church of to the house of God God we bless your name as we come through the doors on today we magnify you give you all the thanks for what you have done for us. So now, God, we ask that you may just pour down your blessings upon us, O oh God, yes. that we may receive, God, from you what you would have for us today, and that we may be able to go and tell the dying world that Jesus lives. Yes. God, we love you, and we thank you. We bless your name, O oh God, yes. and we do give you all the praise and glory. In Jesus' name, we do pray. Amen. 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 So I was reading over this passage of scripture, and Take a look at it, just um, uh, took me by storm how it's uh, looking into it. You see that in verse number one, it says, and again, he entered, talking about Jesus, entered into Capernaum after some days, some days. And then it says it was noise or it was heard that what? That he was in the house. Just like the title of this, Jesus is in the house. Uh, he's, he's in the house. He's in the house. He's in the house. And, and so we're looking at this, and probably we'll come up with at least four of these points out of this that, number one, he is in the house, and number two, they came. Number three, he preached, and number four, he healed. Uh, when we look at these passages of Scripture, we'll see that, that Jesus had come to town, come to Camp Nam, and, and began to just go inside this house. Now, prior to this, it says that Jesus had come to this particular area and he had gone inside Peter's house. Uh, you know, Peter was married. Y'all know that? Yeah, yeah he, was, he was married. And um, wife showed him, going to work with him, did she? Uh, and um, he was married, and, and he, at home, was his wife and his mother-in-law. And the Bible said his mother-in-law was sick with a fever. And the Bible said that he touched her, uh, laid hands on her pretty much. And, and the Bible lets us know that she was healed. And after she was healed, the Bible says she began to serve them, uh, minister to them uh, while they were at the, at the house. And then the Bible says that he went on and along with his disciples, those who we had at that particular time to, to preach go to different synagogues and, and minister 
And as he was doing so, he went from town to town. And, and the Bible even says there in chapter 1 that he cleansed, cleansed a leper even. A leper is someone who has this disease and it's contagious at the time. And people stayed away from him. But Jesus cleansed that leper. And then the Bible went on and it said that uh, just went everywhere. And then in chapter number 2 it says, And again he entered into Capernaum. Uh, because what happened is that Jesus had cleansed that leper and told the leper, don't tell nobody, okay? Because, you know, if, uh, someone, if he told someone, then the word would get out. And then he wouldn't be able to do what he really needed to do or wanted to do, you know, preach the gospel. Because word would get out, the only thing that folk want to do is come in and get what? Get healed. That's all I want to do is come in and get healed. Uh, so... He did that, and then as he, so he went out to the desert place, as I said, and finally he came back here in chapter 2, and again he entered into Capernaum after some days. Now, it is not said exactly what house he was in, and it was supposed that he went back into Peter's house, possibly, uh, because it was during the, during the same area. Uh, noise, it was heard that he was in the house. How many of y'all know it's important for Jesus to be in the house? It is important for Jesus to be in the house. Uh, he, yes, he should be in your address house. Yes, 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 yes. But the only time that he's in your address house, you know, the number in the street, in the city, in the state, in the country or continent or whatever it might be, it's good that he's in your house, but the only time that he's going to be in your house is when? It's when you are in your house. But as long as it's he is in your house. Amen? He's going to be in your house. Uh, your house meeting inside of you. And I want to share with us here in first first Thessalonians, I mean not first first Corinthians and and if there's a first and there's a what? A second, right? Okay, first Corinthians chapter number three and and here's in verse number 16, sometimes a lot of time when you read passages of scripture in different books, you say, let's go 316 and see what it happens. It has something very important for us. The whole word is important. But here in 1 Corinthians chapter number 3, verse number 16, of course, this process or this chapter comes from the point where uh, there is some growth that's going uh, in the church. At least Paul began to say that, that, you know, a lot of the Christians were carnal minded and he wanted to share with them and help them. Uh, change from that carnal mind to the spiritual mind in which they needed, which is the mind of Christ. So as he, got, as he continued on, he, he began to write down here in verse number 16. It says right here, Know ye not that ye are the, what's that? Temple, Temple of God and that the Spirit of God, what? Dwelleth, Dwelleth in you. Dwelleth, E-T-H, mean Continuous. Meaning he ain't leaving, y'all. Dwelleth, live, stay, remain, dwelleth in you. Uh, so as he dwelleth in so you are the temple of God. You've heard people say that you are the church. You know, we tell we say, you are the church. Bible lets us know that. So therefore, you are the temple of God. And then because of that, the Holy Ghost dwelleth inside of inside of you. So therefore, uh, you, amen. He is in uh, your house. And the important thing here in this passage, as Paul began to write here in 1 Corinthians chapter number 3, he began to talk about uh, these, the carnal-minded passage uh, 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 Christian and, and, uh, and how you know, it needs to be fixed and how we can fix it. He began to talk about the foundation, uh, about building. And when he talks about building, we know that the foundation is necessary and the foundation has got to be sure whenever you get ready to build upon it. So it's important to have foundation in our lives. So how are, okay, yes, we have Jesus in us, but how do we get to that point to have Jesus in us? We know there's a lot of people that have never been to church growing up, never even really desired to hear church music, so to speak. But we know a lot of us grew up in the church. We may not have been saved, but we what? Grew up in the church and we knew church. Uh, and, and for those of us who grew up in church, we knew that the word of God was important and the word of God got inside of us, even though we did not accept Jesus Christ as our Savior, but we knew the word was true and it was a lie and you didn't play with the word. So foundation is necessary to get children in uh, the church so they can hear the word of God. And as the word of God is heard, it gets in them and it finds a place in them. 
Because the Bible says this right here in the, in, there in the Old Testament. It says train up a yeah. child, right? In, in, in the way he, he should go. You know, and the thing is that they're not always going to go that way. But at some point, you know what's going to happen? That word is going to come up in them. And they're going to get back on the right track and accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, as did me. Uh, so it's important to have a foundation and that foundation being sure. Uh, so, yes, when children are coming to church, they begin to begin to learn some things about church. They begin to learn church songs. Take me to the king. Yeah, right, right, right. Absolutely right. <laughs> and and and. Back when we were young, we began to learn some church songs, but it wasn't those long songs like that, you know. <laughs> we had those short, short songs like, bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Uh, so short I had to write it down myself, you know. <laughs> it says, bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Oh, bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. There is no other name I know. Let's do it again. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Oh, bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. There is no other name I know. And then there's another part that says, there is power in the name of Jesus. Power in the name of Jesus. Power in the name of Jesus. There is no other name I know. And the song just continues to go on and on and on and on and on. That's where it happens. It on and on and on. It keeps on going. And then it gets inside of the, of the child and everybody else. And they get happy. Everybody get happy. People start dancing and stuff. Because it's in them. It just starts just going in, in, just all in you. Yeah, you know. Then by the time you sit down, you're nice and tired. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then we, then we preach the next 50, 50 minutes an hour, and then everybody be what? Uh-huh, uh-huh, sleep, sleep. So, what did y'all have? Well, it was good in church. It was exciting. What, what, did, what, what did he preach about? Well, you know, it was good. Yeah. So, so what happened is that there is important. So you have some foundation. The foundation is necessary. The word of God is necessary. Amen. So we, yes, yes, Jesus has got to be in the house. But in order for Him to be in our house, Amen, we have got to be in Him. And then He will, of course, be inside of of us. Because when we begin to think about all that Jesus has done for us and all, all you know, when, when, when I think about the, the, yeah, you know, all that he's done for me. And there's another little song right here. It says, like, Jesus, I'll never forget. Done. Jesus, I'll never forget how you set me free. Jesus, I'll never forget how you brought me out. Jesus, I'll never forget. No, never. And then, and then the love part says, How can I forget what you've done for me? How can I? How can I forget how you set me free? How can I forget? How can I forget how you brought me out? How can I forget? No, never. It's important to have some foundation in us. And Jesus is in, in the house. He's got to be inside of you. We look in Mark chapter number two, verse number one, it says, and again, he, he entered into Capernaum after some days. And it was noise or heard that he was in the house. So it's important to know that, that he's in the house because you know what? People are going to find out that he's in the house. If you have Jesus Christ in your life, folk going to know. Folk are going to know. You still may want to go out to the club, but you know what? Folks still going to know. And they're going to be looking at you because you know what? You look displaced. <laughs> like you don't belong here. You know, and eventually if you start feeling a little bit more uncomfortable. Where, as a matter of fact, I don't even got to go. So yeah, yeah, yeah. What happened is that, is that when he's in the house, folk going to, 
folk gonna know. And then when folk know that he's in your house, folk gonna come to you. Look, 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 look at number two. Look at verse two. It says, and straightway, what's happened? Many were gathered together. In so much that there was no room to receive them. No, not so much as about the door. Man, that place was packed. How do you get a church packed, y'all? He said, feed them. <laughs> Food, huh? Food, then we do it, sister. <laughs> hey, Amen. Feed, feed them. Well, you know what? I wish somebody would catch on fire. Huh? Catch on fire. But not with this other fire, but with the fire of the Holy Ghost. You see, what happened is folk, folk come to watch some fire. They come to see, amen, about the fire. It wasn't even because their folks are gathering around and, and but yes, set the place on fire. Not literally, amen, but amen, in the Lord. Amen. It goes on and says, let us know that yes, they, they came. When they find out that Jesus was in the house, the folk come. When folk find out that you, amen, belong to Jesus, amen, you will have more friends than what you lost. As you continue to go higher in the Lord, continue to lift his name up, continue, amen, amen, to worship him, continue to do all for him, amen. Yes, it seems like friends start dropping off. Amen. But if that's the case, we didn't necessarily need them in the first place. Amen. But as we continue to go on, just like birds, amen, we see birds of a feather, a flock together. You'll find out that you have more friends than what you thought. You can go from one city to another and go to any church that's worshiping our Savior, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And you will find that you have family right there. Amen. You will be taken, taken care of because you are in the kingdom. Yes, not only, amen, does he need to be in our house, but also, amen, they came. When, when they find out that Jesus is in, people, people will come. You said that if you build it, they will come. So if we build ourselves up in the Lord, they'll come. The right, the right friends, the right people. So yes, not only did, do we have to have Jesus in our life and also that they will come when you present Jesus Christ. But as we continue on looking at verse number two, it says that not only was the house so crowded, but it also says that he did what? He healed it. What did he say? And he, what is that verse two? And he preached the word unto them. It wasn't no show. Yes. It wasn't no, no uh, nothing where you, you form a line and, and you give out this much and you give that much and you give that much. What about none of that stuff that we came up with? It's about preached word. The word of God. That's what it said right there. Preach the word until what word? He is Logos. He is the word. He preached what he knew, and what he knew was everything. But he preached to them what's necessary, and what was necessary to them was the kingdom of God. Because they were wrapped up, tied up, tangled up in the law. And they need to hear the kingdom of God. And so Jesus, yes, he, he preached the word unto them. And the kingdom of God, he pulled from the prophets. He pulled, amen, from, 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 that, from the history. He pulled from all the Old Testament, from the law. Mm -hmm. And he taught them. Verse number three, and it says, and they came and they come unto him. And then afterwards, of course, as he began to, as he was preaching, uh, they, 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 they come unto him bringing one sick of the palsy with, which was born of four. And palsy basically is paralysis. And born of four means that he was being carried by four people. Two on either side of a dilly. Well, you know, let's say he's in a blanket or something. There, Two got two, two up front and two in the back. But they're carrying him. So now what happens is that we can see that as Jesus was preaching, what was he preaching? The word. As he, as he was preaching the word unto him, what has happened is that folk found out he was there. And when they found out that Jesus, Jesus was there, I wonder what happens to the people their faith began to rise. Amen. Their faith. So he had four 
this right here, five people. It says that they brought this one person in that was sick of the palsy, was paralyzed. And four people were, were bringing him. So they were bringing him to the one they knew that could do something about it. Uh, so he, he preached the word of God unto them while he was preaching. Then they began to bring this one God. Now, was that interruption according to what God would have is right in line? Because the word is going forth as the word go forth. Now, look. In order for me to have some faith, in order for my faith to really do something, I got to first of all, what? Hear that word. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So the preached word is going out. The four friends probably have already heard the word, heard Jesus before. They heard about him. And then when you know about Jesus, that's, that's, all, you, that's all you need to hear. I'm running. I'm going there. So, so they brought a friend. Then I, look. I'm sure those friends probably needed something. Maybe a job. Was all four of them employed? Maybe not. Were all four of them rich? Maybe not. But they were, and they had a friend that needed healing. He was paralyzed. And they got together somehow. And they said to themselves, among themselves, let's take our friend to go see Jesus to be healed. Wow, isn't that something? When you're not thinking about yourself, but you're thinking about others. That's the kingdom. That's kingdom thinking. Not being selfish. You're being selfless. Helping somebody, somebody else. Now that's different from paying forward, you know, that kind of stuff that, that, that we kind of have right now. This is hands on. Preach the word unto them. As the word was being preached, uh, preached they came they, uh, and they come uh, unto him, bringing one sick of the palsy, which was born afore. So we got to have Jesus in us. Uh, the people will come. And then look right here. Jesus right here in, the, in this case was preaching the word. He preached the word. And not only that, but look what happens in verse 4. And when they could not come nigh or near unto him, because their whole purpose is to take their friend to Jesus. When they could not come near to him for the press or the crowd, they uncovered the roof. Basically, they did what the roof? They tore that thing apart. Didn't they do it? They uncovered the roof. Okay. Yeah. You know, whether it layers up there or whatever it was, their purpose was to get their friend down. And what does that mean? They're, they're knocking a hole in that? That's exactly what, the, what they said that they, that they would do. When they could not come through uh, the, the, uh, for the press, they uncovered the roof where he was, where Jesus was. So they had to have an idea as far as the location where Jesus was in the house. Yeah. Was he on the east side, west side? So I got all these things from thinking about I'm here, east, west side. Oh, yeah. but, 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 basically, I would say over there. Over there, over there, you know, where this is or where that is. Where was they want they want to assess where Jesus was. Because they want to make sure if they're gonna tear up Peter's roof. I mean, well, I don't know if Peter, Peter, I don't know if they had a fight on their hands, I think. Uh, but no, if they were to tear up the roof, they want to make sure it was where Jesus was. You see, this right here is a one-shot thing. They knew they were gonna get in trouble. They knew something was gonna happen, but if they're gonna get in if they're gonna get in trouble, if they're gonna do what's gonna happen, make sure it's right. So they, so they ripped off the roof where Jesus was speaking. And then the Bible lets us know is that it says that, and when they had broken it up, they let down the bed or whatever that man was on, however they were carrying him, they let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay or where the paralyzed man was laying. So evidently it was some type of stretcher or something and it let that man down. If you can imagine this roof being torn open and somebody just letting uh, somebody down on this stretcher right here. They had a long enough rope evidently to let him down. And look at verse 5. Very important, y'all. Very important. While he was preaching, look what happened. When Jesus, what happened? Saw, saw their faith. Now that, that says something there. When he saw their faith. That lets us know that faith is action. When he saw their faith, 
when he saw their faith, faith in action, when he saw their faith, when he saw their faith, you, you, you don't know how we say what faith is. You know how someone would ask what faith is. What faith is, then we, we quote that 11.1, right? Hebrews 11.1, we quote it. We quote it good. And then we roll on, hoping nobody asks exactly, exactly what does that mean. But here's what we say uh, here uh, regarding faith. Here's what we say. We say this right here. We say this now faith is the substance, substance or assurance or realization of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. And I'm gone. Oh, hold up, brother. What exactly does that mean? You know, <laughs> look what Jesus said. He saw their faith. No, Jesus saying that he saw faith. That means that our faith should be seen, y'all. Faith. He saw, he saw, he saw their faith. And Hebrews 11, 11, uh, uh, whole chapter 11 lets us know that faith is seen. Take a look at it right here. I'm just going to go look. It says, look, look at verse number two. Here it is. Right. For by it, by what? Faith, right? The elders obtained a good report. Look, look. Look at three. Through faith, we understand. Drop, drop down to four. By faith, look what happened. Abel offered unto God. Look at five. By faith, Enoch was translated uh, that he should not see death. Y'all know what, what, uh, what Enoch did with God? He walked with God, and then he was not. He just simply lit, went from here to there with Jesus, with, with, you know, with, with God. Look at, look, 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 at number, number, uh, look, look at verse number seven. By faith, Noah being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house by which he, con which he condemned the world and became heir of righteousness, which is by faith. Look at eight, verse eight. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should uh, have to receive uh, for an inheritance, obeyed. He obeyed and he didn't know where he was going. He just went. You see the faith. Look at verse 9. By faith he sojourned in the land of promise. Look at verse 11. Through faith also Sarah received strength to conceive seed. It goes on, 17. By faith Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac. And that took a whole lot of faith, y'all. If y'all want to see faith, y'all see a brother putting his uh, child down there to be, to be sacrificed, to be, uh, to be a sacrifice unto God. Verse 20, by faith, Isaac blessed Jacob. By 21, by faith, Jacob, when he was dying, blessed both his sons, the sons of Joseph. Uh, uh, verse, verse 22, by faith, Joseph, when he died, made mention of the departation of the children of Israel. Verse 23, by faith, Moses, when he was born, was hid three months. 24, by faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called, what? The son of Pharaoh. Uh, Pharaoh's daughter. Uh, verse 27, by faith he forsook Egypt. Through faith, 28, uh, he kept the Passover. 29, by faith they passed through the Red Sea by dry land, y'all. Y'all want to see faith? Go through some water like that. The Red Sea that rised up. That's like that movie we saw. What was that movie called? Ten, ten, yeah, thank you. Ten Commandments. Talking about by faith. Not Hollywood, y'all, but by faith. Look at, look at this right here, 30. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell down. Y'all remember that? They walked around Jericho 10 times. Seven. Se seven. Thank you, sir. Seven times. You know, and now look, 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 look at 30, look at verse 31. By faith, the harlot Rahab perished. Not with, she was tough, y'all. Read about Rahab, y'all haven't done that. Verse 33. Who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, and did everything, all that has happened. Amen. When we look at, amen, this right here about faith, we can tell somebody that faith is action. Now, if faith is so much action, therefore it must be a second type of faith. There's a faith in action. It must be a faith of laziness, too. Jesus said he saw their faith. What were they doing? They were doing something. 
They were doing something for somebody else. And that's what we do, y'all. And that's what Jesus preached. That's what he told them. He says, look, if you have two coats, he said, what? Take one off. You give it. God blesses us with overflow, y'all. What, 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 what do we do with overflow? We hoard it? No. We bless others. Amen. This is kingdom. So yes, Jesus, Jesus preached kingdom, the kingdom of the kingdom of God. So yes, see, we got to have Jesus in the house. We have Jesus in the house. Folk gonna come, and when they come, it's an opportunity for you to. I know we use the word preach, but in all actuality, basically proclaiming what you know, what He has done for you, a testimony. Tell somebody what God, how God has blessed you. That's what you're doing. You're proclaiming. And you have been called. No, I ain't got no license to preach. No. Who needs a license to preach? Who needs a license to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ? Jesus is coming back and he's coming back. He ain't looking for no paperwork. He's looking for that word to be spread abroad. Telling somebody about Jesus and what he can do for them. So, yes, see, back in Mark, yes, he was preaching and, and he saw these, these, these brothers, they were four of them, and they brought a man down that was, that was sick of the palsy, he was paralyzed. And, and then Jesus, uh, he saw their, he saw, he, I, can't, I can't help but get over it, he saw their faith. Man, he saw their faith. They were doing something. They were doing something for the kingdom. They probably didn't know, but it's affecting us today what they did. So, yes, he goes on and look at verse five in Mark chapter number two. He says, and when Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy. And so we got to have Jesus in us. We have Jesus in us. People are going to come. They come. We're able to tell them about Jesus and what they've done for us. And here, lastly, it says that he healed. Look at verse number six again. I mean, verse five again. When he saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. His sins? What did he do? He was only paralyzed. But Jesus says, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. What sins got to do with it? Well, Everything. Sin is what we know. Who, who in here don't know sin? We are very familiar with sin. Very familiar. Toddlers, amen. They, even though they don't know what it is, we sure know. Because we don't teach them right there, turn around and cut somebody out. If we don't teach them right there, do just what they see on B, you know, BT, what's the, the YouTube and everything else. If we don't teach them right, if we don't teach them right, they're going to go out and carjack. And if we don't teach them right, they're going to go out there and kill somebody. If we don't teach them right, they're going to go out there and rob. They're going to go out there and rape. They're going to go out there and do everything, amen, whatever they want to do. They're the ones that's going to slap their teacher. They're the ones that's going to cut their teacher. They're the ones that's going to shoot their teacher. You're talking about kids, y'all. But it's the church's fault. Since when? Parents don't bring their children to church. The children ain't going to come. And if the parents bring their children to church and they get in the parents and get in their children, then they would know, amen. Then let them go out there and do whatever they're going to do. No, they're going to make sure that the children do what they're supposed to do. Because the Bible says if they go out there, they're going to make a mockery of you. And you don't want to be embarrassed in the store when they throw a tantrum on you. You've taught them better than that. Just wait till we get to the car. Uh uh. <laughs> so, if we happen to see you on, on, the, on the video going viral, we understand. Because you're going to turn around and say, The Bible said. That's right. Put that passage down there. They ain't going to kill them, drive the devil out of them, that's for sure. Look, he says that. Verse number six says, but there, he, he said, your sins are forgiven. That, man, that's awesome. 
But yes, sin have, have, have a lot to do with a lot, a lot of things. Look at verse 6. But there were certain of the scribes sitting there. Sin is something that is against God. All right? That's what sin is. If it's against God, it ain't right. If it ain't right, it's sin. And, we, uh, and that used to be preached all the time. Sin, 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 sin. Man, it seems like you're sinning on doing everything. Couldn't do nothing because you sinned. Couldn't listen to the blues because what? You sinned. Couldn't do this because you sinned. Couldn't, couldn't do, you know, everything seemed like. Uh, but as we get into God's word, we begin to see uh, where we are, who we are, and whose we are. And then we can able to live our life, amen, uh, in joy and happiness in pleasing God. Verse 6 says, but there were certain of the scribes sitting there and re reasoning in their hearts. Verse 7, uh, why doth this man thus speak blasphemies? And here's, what they, here's, here's why they said that. Who can forgive sins but God only? Because Jesus said, son, your sins be forgiven. They considered that as blasphemy. Like he considered himself as God or somebody. Guess what? Hello, he is God. You know, so look, verse 8, and immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit that they so reasoned within themselves, he said unto them, why reason ye these things in your hearts? Whether it's easier to say the sick of the uh, say to the sick of the palsy, thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say what? Arise and take up thy bed and do what? And walk the words of God. He says, but in verse 10, that they may know that the Son of Man has power or authority on earth to forgive sins. He said to the sick of the palsy in verse 11, I say unto thee, do what? Arise and take up thy bed and go thy way into thine house. That's what Jesus did. Did he spend 15 minutes praying over him and, 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 and uh, uh, telling God what to do? No. He spoke the word. The Bible lets us know that according to the word of God, he sends forth his word. And when his word goes forth, it will do what it's supposed to do. The word is action. The word is powerful. The word is sharper than any two-edged sword. The word will do what he sent it out to do. And what, here's what it says. It won't return void. It will accomplish what he sent it out to do. So when God sends the word out and says, heal him, heal her, it's done. But first and foremost, he wants healing for us to be spiritually. Because this body right here ain't going to last always anyways. So he wants us spiritually, he wants us right. And then we thank God according to his will that he'll allow us to be healed physically. Now go home. Here's what he said. He says, look in 12. And immediately he arose. And guess what he did? Man, that, guy, man, that fella got out of there, y'all. I don't blame him. You know, look, he got his, look, he got his stuff. And, and I, don't even, I don't even think he told his friends to come on. <laughs> he said, he, they said immediately he arose took up the bed and went forth before them all that means that if, if his friends were there they were behind him that fella took off he left he did amen what Jesus told him to do now that's obedience y'all and it goes on and says in so much that they're, they're, they were all amazed and glorified God saying we never saw it like this before. We never saw anything like this. Who is this man? Forgive sins and tell this fellow to take up his bed and go home? Who is he? Yeah, they knew who he was. But what they didn't know, that he was the creator. What they didn't know, that it's the very Jesus that made you and me. What they didn't know, he was the one that made the seas the mountains, and everything in which they saw. He was the one who made the bed that the man was carried in on. Amen. He was the one that made the roof and everything else that we have. Yeah. He was the man. Yeah. 
And he is the man. The son of God. Jesus. Our savior. The Lord of our lives. The king of kings. And the Lord of lords. Our Jesus. Jesus the Christ. The anointed one. The one that died on the cross for you and for me. The one that took the sins of this world upon himself. And hung on the cross. Amen. Amen. They hung him high and what's that? Stretched him wide. He hung his head and then he died. And that's it, right? Nope. What happened? Three days later, he rose again. All power in his hands. And that same power, that resurrection power he has, he's given it to you and to, to, you and to me. Amen. According to the authority in his word. Because his word is life. His word is alive. And if you don't believe it, try it. He'll change your life. Let us pray to God. We, we thank you for your word. Yes, Jesus, he's, he's in the house. He's in the house for us to, to hear the word first. And then God, according to our passage here, you allow four friends to bring another friend that was paralyzed. They said, if we can just get to Jesus, we'll make a way. They couldn't get in, so they tore up the roof and lowered them down. So God, nothing was going to stop them. The faith that they have in you, knowing that you would heal their friend. God, we thank you for allowing that to happen. It shows us, oh God, that if we don't stop at anything, just to get to you, we'll be successful in whatever, God, you would have for us to do. Nothing shall stand between us and you. So, God, we thank you, God, for your word. Now, God, we ask that you may just send forth your word, God, and heal your land. Your land, God, we're asking that you would include, God, your people. Those of us, God, who may be sick. Those who may be afflicted. Those, God, who are going through different situations in life, oh God, not knowing, God, of what's coming next. Financial issues, God. Employment issues, God. God, we ask that you would touch right now in the name of Jesus. That you would have your way, God, in their lives. God, we know that you can fix it. We, you know, we, we know, God, that you can, that you are able. You never fail. Your word let us know that you would never leave us nor forsake us. So, God, we thank you. And we bless your name. We magnify your name. When we bless your name, oh God, everything else becomes small. So God, right now in the name of Jesus, we thank you, God, for what you're doing, what you have done, and what you are going to do. We bless your name. We magnify you. And it's in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. 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 God bless.